Hey yo guys, welcome back. My name is HM and I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic, and if you're new here, the swarm welcomes you. Now that I'm back to being a functional human being, the past couple of days I've had some pretty crazy allergies, but I wanted to make a video kind of similar to D-Hearts. He did a really good video for our uh, hashtag we want cards movement. Uh, it was sort of his history with Bakugan and what got him into it, and I kind of wanted to do a video like that myself because I've got a lot to tell why I love Bakugan so much. But first, I wanted to thank everybody that joined us for our hashtag, We Want Cards Movement. Y'all are awesome. I'm so proud of what we've done. I hope that it does something for us in the near future. Uh, there's a lot that I'm thankful for over the past week, and it's been super, super crazy. Uh, I spent like two hours every single day the past like three days after I opened up the booster box on stream. And that took forever to sort everything, but it's going to be worth it. We're going to get to some brawls and stuff with the new cards and all kinds of things. But... Anyway, thank you to everybody who did participate, and to the people that uh, made videos without being on the schedule, really appreciate that. Uh, I'm glad there's a lot of people that actually want to make videos on the TCG, and that's amazing. That's really incredible to me. Uh, thank you. Man, there were some people that made some awesome Brawl videos, but there was, um, there was quite varied content when it came to that kind of stuff, so I'm really happy that people were super into it. Hopefully Spin Master will notice us. That'd be amazing. But anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get into the reasons why I love Bakugan and how I started. Way, way back on, like, the first year of Bakugan, these little dudes right here, back when I was in elementary school in, like, fifth grade, uh, I had a really good friend. I won't uh, disclose his name, but he'll know who he is if he sees the video. Uh, he brought Bakugan to my house, and I was actually kind of apprehensive to play because I wasn't into card games. And I thought, oh, it's just another card game. I'm not going to try it. Well, he got me to do it, and we lined up some of those TV tray uh, tables, and we set up the gate cards. And I've got some old, like, Korean import cards that I bet y'all would really want to see because I know I have some legacy fans, and I actually showed these off on stream at one point. These are the cards that came with those, and these are super, super cool. Uh, I've got quite a few different versions of these, but these are what I was shown, and I'm like, I can't even read this. But um, it was so simple, just being able to be like, okay, match the colors with the boosts and whatnot, and boom, there you go. Um, roll them out, have fun. And I was so hooked after that. I mean, it was so different, it didn't even feel like a card game. After that, uh, I got, it took me a little bit to actually get into it, but we started to go to the stores and start getting our own Bakugan and stuff, and man, it was always super, super fun to hunt, because I never knew what existed. This was back in like, man, I want to say like 2008, I think it was 2008 when we first started, and uh, we didn't have access to the internet, like openly, so a lot of the stuff that we were finding, we had no idea what it was, what existed, so it was all super fresh and super fun. But um, yeah, that was quite the experience. Uh, going into school with them was also an insanely positive experience. You would think it wouldn't be because school can be terrible, but it was one of the things that really kind of cemented why I love it so much because people were talking to each other over these little things these little things, and they wanted to trade them. Like, okay, let's, uh, let me go ahead and close up this Platinum Nilius that's sitting here. But, um, the size difference is incredible how f small they used to be. And I remember running around on the playground looking for people to trade. Look how much smaller these are. These are almost like, I think Nanogon are smaller, but B1 Bakugan, way back in the day, uh, there, we were scattered with B2s and whatnot, but dude, going on the playground and looking for people to trade with, it brought so many people together, and it was so special that so little in my time brought kids together. Like, there was so much stuff that always kept us, like, kind of segregated. You had your, like, cliques and stuff of other students and their hobbies and whatnot. It is elementary school, though, so it's kind of to be expected, but that was such an insanely positive part of my life that I cannot... <laughs> it's gonna sound funny, I can't let it go. Like, Bakugan to this day still makes me meet so many people because it's such a social game and just being a part of it's amazing but um moving on to like the later stuff uh year two was awesome for bakugan uh new Vistoria came out and i was big into that there was so many cool variants to hunt hold on let's see let me see if i have a couple um 
there were... I think these were a part of the first uh, wave of Battle Brawlers. You could find them every now and then. Um, the Reverse Attributes. This is a Reverse Darkest Bakugan, and it's super cool. Um, there was all kinds of special treatments. I wish I had more of them sitting next to me. I have some of them. Oh my god, hold on. Hold on. I'm not going far. Ugh. There were Pearls as well, and these are some of my favorites. Uh, pearls were super cool. They're like a white pearlescent kind of color. Let me see if I can cover this. I don't know if it'll focus, but it had such cool colors. And they're almost kind of metallic. Frost, Baku Frost was my favorite though. Uh, I actually, believe it or not, I don't have any of those. The closest thing I've got, because I traded everything away as a kid, is this Blade Tigrera that has a pearlescent kind of sheen to it. Baku Frost were my favorite though. Um, and uh, did I have, where did my mosquito go? I've shown him off before, yeah, here he is. This was my second favorite, and this is what I wish would come back. Um, these neons are super cool. Uh, we're getting closer to having that, but these were awesome. Now, going into year three, we had the introduction to the Battle Gear, and that was when I was super, super into Bakugan. Like, I wanted to get better at it, I wanted to learn to roll. Uh, the Battle Gear were super cool. I don't think I have any sitting around. Um, no, you know what? I think there are a couple in here. Yeah, 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 okay. Um, let's go ahead and get this out. I should have been more prepared for this. Uh, do I have a Bakugan that can slide? We'll go with this. Okay, so. I'm going to go ahead and close this up, but anyway, uh, this was when I was really trying to go out and play with people, and uh, the playground was always super fun because people actually wanted to play, and uh, we would even do it on the concrete, and admittedly that wasn't the best thing for the Bakugan, but hey, when you're a kid you do what you can do. So Battle Gear were among my favorite, and they are extremely similar to Baku Gear, of course, in the current reboot. So, most of these Bakugan would have like a spot that would fold down, and then you could just plop. They've got these little holes on the bottom, and there's a little metal piece inside of the dock here, and you just put it on the Bakugan, and uh, I think that should slide in here. Uh, or not, because Luma Growl is weird. Go figure. Um, let me grab another. I don't think any of these are going to work for this. Wait, hold up. Am I learning something new today? Because these flaps are going to keep it from doing anything. These don't, these don't fold back anymore. Of course, I had to grab the one instance where I can't... I literally... It literally doesn't work. It literally doesn't work. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Hold on. I tried, guys. Anyway. <laughs> Battle Gear. Same deal. Same deal with the, uh, the new ones, like the Legacy series. Or not... Or... They're the same as the reboot, pretty much, um, but you don't need the toys to play. Uh, that year was amazing for me, because I started going certain places, like Toys R Us. Rip, uh, rip, rip Toys R Us, I want that to come back so bad. But um, there was a really cool, hold on, here's a really cool piece of memorabilia. There was a really cool event that they held uh, at Toys R Us that was like a mini tournament thing, and they'd give out exclusive cards for going to these. And I have my membership card, which is just, you know, going there and getting a generic card that everybody could get and you put your signature on it. But I still have it and it still means a lot to me because it is super, super cool. I don't even know if my camera will focus to this, but it is the front facing camera. But I am so happy to actually have this still because this was super cool. I'll always look back on that moment fondly because it was the first time. I can't remember actually, wait. Was it Toys R Us? Yeah, okay, it was Toys R Us. I was thinking of another one that was at Target. Um, there was actually a thing at Target that I went to as well, I think. Um, might have been for Beyblade, I can't remember, but I did do Beyblade stuff. Uh, yeah, that was just an insanely positive experience, going there and finding stuff that I'd never seen before either, because our Walmart never stocked on time. And shocker, it still really doesn't do that, so Target's always a good place to go look for new stuff, so... Yeah, that was definitely one of the crazier times of my life. Uh, I loved Bakugan, and I was always looking for more stuff. But, as all good things come to an end, I did end up hopping off at our next topic here. And I gotta pause this, because I can only record for 10 minutes. So, hold on a sec. I'll be, I'll be right back, don't worry. Okay, on to our next part. Mectanium Surge.
I actually only have one of these, and it's because my friend actually bought some Bakugan stuff at a garage sale for me, like, a couple years into the reboot. I think it was, like, Armored Alliance. But he found a Baku rack, which is a super cool peripheral. Uh, I kind of wish these would come back. These are actually really awesome. Um, they store a lot, but I have a... I think this is a Mutant Kalian. I think it's pretty common. These were kind of the start to the uh, full metal Bakugan, quote-unquote. Uh, real metal Bakugan, even though this has very little metal in it. But I think this dude's pretty cool. It's pretty neat to actually have one of these because I never bought them, but I always seen them. He does look kind of cool, but by the time I got into this, people kind of dropped out of Bakugan, so I didn't really have much of a reason to buy these anymore. Uh, there's a lot of silver paint on these and not a whole lot of metal. I think these claws are metal. I can't really tell, but the feet are metal on this, and... Yeah, I mean, he looks cool. I mean, he's a really, probably one of the cooler Mectanium Surge Bakugan that I've seen. But yeah, he's, uh, he's neat. But I dropped out hard after that because I did not like the mobile armor, or mobile assault, whatever they were called. I think there was, like, battle suits, too. No more. Let's not do that again. <laughs> That's just too much stuff. Um, I'm quite okay where we're at with Nanogon. Um, I think we've got enough peripherals now, and I'm pretty happy that we have gear and things of the sort so man it's just it's crazy looking back on now we're now we're here at the reboot and this shelf you can't even see the top shelf but it spans all four years of the reboot and all four years of the reboot have been incredible to me like i i can't stop hunting like i just i really love to go out and look for new stuff and talk to people in the community it's been an overwhelmingly positive experience going and recording videos and stuff and just kind of speaking like it is nice it's almost like a kind of virtual diary in a way but i'm glad people watch and they enjoy what they see and what we talk about it's been a wild ride but there is still plenty more to talk about uh after we got back into the reboot, me and my friend, uh, he will he was willing to actually buy some of the cards so we could try it out. And then we had a full fledged TCG. And as soon as I played it, I loved it because it wasn't overly complicated. It was very simple to learn. The only one gripe I had was it was kind of hard to build a deck from the Bakugan you wanted. So like I bought Aralus Maxitar, um, Ventus Mantanoid, and Aquos. Oh man, Aquos, I'd have to, I'd have to look, I don't even think I have it on the shelf. It was an Aquos, it was Sinius, Aquos Sinius Ultra, that was what I started with, and I did not have barely like any cards to actually use, so I had to buy like a structure, no I didn't even buy a structure deck, I just bought packs, and I went from there and my deck wasn't very good, he bought the structure deck because it saved some money, but I wanted to go full in on it to see how it goes if you were to buy the cards and to make a deck. And it was still really fun. Rolling was awesome. Like, seeing them pop open was spectacular compared to, like, the old Bakugan where they just kind of open up. Um, they kind of do that now, but, man, Ultra Bakugan are so freaking cool. Uh, yeah, there is so much stuff that I give praise for this game. And then going into year two, we had the gear comeback, and the gear was awesome. And I was super, people were super worried that it was going to be, like, another peripheral thing where you just drop a piece of plastic on another piece of plastic and it gave you a boost. No, they actually had gear cards and gear cards don't require the toy. You can throw them in your deck and they go under your character card. I'm not going to show that stuff because I, I don't have all that prepared, but most of the people that are watching this probably know what's going on with the reboot. So as we get into that, I was hunting super hard for diamonds and stuff. Uh, elementals weren't a thing yet. But man, every, I'm telling you, every single hunt has been, there have been some bummers, right? But there have been some really big highs when you find things that you really want to find and you've been looking for them for weeks, months even. Um, hunting is definitely my favorite part of the hobby, but I still love to play the TCG when I get the opportunity and we're going to be doing that more soon. So hopefully you'll be looking forward to that. Uh, anyway, then we move on to th year three, which is like Geogon. And I think Geogon are fine. 
Um, I don't think they're that bad. I mean, I still don't think they're nearly as fun as rolling out a Bakugan, but I mean, they count as like a reroll, so you can use them to get an actual battle going, because if you miss a roll in Bakugan, it really sucks. You kind of just have to sit there and take it and hope you get a flip. But Geogun were cool. The designs were amazing in Geogun Rising, though. Um, and then they also introduced Elementals, which are really, really cool. Uh, almost kind of baku techy in a way. Their paint designs were very, very, like, vibrant. And the designs in general have just really gotten closer to the crazy baku tech designs, and I really like it. But the thing with Bakugan's reboot is a lot of the Bakugan are based on, like, real creatures and stuff as to where... Bakutech and like classic Bakugan were kind of based off of real creatures, but they were more out there, I guess. Like you had like mermaids, you had like uh, whatever the heck uh, fortress is, like a, a four headed, uh, I don't even know, like Asian deity? I don't know. I can't even, I don't even know what to call it. Um, there was a lot of like really cool mythical creatures in the classic, and I wish we'd see some of them back. Uh, Monorus was cool, Cyranoid was cool, Fortress was cool. Uh, just so many things that are like that. Like, more bipedal stuff that looks interesting. But, uh, Year 4, or Year 3 was super cool, and Year 4 even, like, knocked it out of the park. Like, I did not expect to like Evolutions as much as I did because there was a bunch of reprints. But then I learned, reprints are kind of cool <laughs> because things get buffed, and you can use the new stuff if you wanted to, if you really like the old ones. I mean, it requires you to buy again, but if you're a collector, and they look different, and they look really unique and cool, I'll pick them up again, especially if they're translucent. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm a sucker for that. Um, year 4 was really cool. Uh, as the years went on, too, for these reboots, the diamonds got a little bit easier to find, which I do appreciate. Like, I know some people don't like them to be that easy to find. I do! I don't want to pay some person that happens to stumble into a toy aisle, like, three or four times the price of a ball of plastic? Like, $50 for a diamond? Come on, man. It's just a... It just ruins the hobby. It's just somebody trying to make a quick buck. But, I digress. Uh, let's move on and keep trying to stay positive, because there's a lot of positive to talk about. It, uh, the TCG has had its kind of speed bumps, but it is still very fun. We're really working on trying to get it back. Uh, there's been that huge movement we just did, which was incredible. Thank you guys so much for that. But year five is looking to be awesome. And I'm seeing year one reprints finally, like Herkelios and uh, what was the other one? We've seen Enoch. We've seen quite a few, but I am so excited for that because we needed those back. We need to get Webum back. We need to get Mantinoid Ultra back. Like... Oh, it's gonna be so, it's gonna be great. I can't wait. And then we're gonna have light up Bakugan. I can't wait. I'm gonna be broke. <laughs> I'm gonna be broke. Especially if cards come back. I'm gonna be buying cards too. Man. Anyway, guys, that's sort of a history of Bakugan sort of thing. Uh, talking about like my past and how I got into Bakugan and why it means so much to me and why the TCG means so much to me. I didn't even talk about, hold on. Um, when the reboot started, I forgot, I've mentioned this quite a few times, one of the reasons I really love the TCG is because I actually traveled to Atlanta to go to Momocon, and I've mentioned this a few times, but going to Momocon to play Bakugan with strangers was amazing. <laughs> I've never seen such a cool crowded like area full of people that wanted to like try Bakugan and play it, and people were buying cards and figures and asking how to play and it was incredible spin master seriously if there's one thing if you happen to be watching this if there's one thing that i wish you would do even if it is not completely tcg focused please go back to conventions because i will go to conventions to play bakugan with people you can sell cards there you can promote you can do everything you need to do please just come back that would be amazing to Ohio. That'd be amazing. Come to Ohio. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to become one with the swarm, please subscribe. We're going to be doing plenty of stuff here in the near future. I still got a diamond three pack I got to open. So I hope you look forward to that. And I guess I'll get you on the next one. See ya.